Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we will be covering one of the most common health problems in female guinea pigs and that is ovarian cysts. So if you have female piggies this is something you're bound to come across at some point. Over 80% of female guinea pigs over the age of three years will develop ovarian cysts. That's how common they are. So it's really important that we understand what they are, the symptoms that they cause and the treatment treatment options available. Unfortunately for us, veterinary medicine has come a long way on this in recent years, so this video will be covering the most up-to-date treatment options as recommended by expert guinea pig vets. And also in this video we are going to be following along with our own very recent experience of ovarian cysts in our very own little Phoebe here. So it was about three weeks ago I first noticed symptoms of ovarian cysts in Phoebe and they did seem to be affecting her, bless her. So do keep watching to find out how things went with Phoebe. Cysts are usually fluid-filled sacs which grow spontaneously on the ovaries. They may be non-functional where they don't release hormones or they might be functional where they overproduce hormones causing very specific symptoms. The most recognisable symptom of hormonal cysts is hair loss on your guinea pig's flanks. This is usually even on both sides and is not related to any sort of itching, skin problem or parasites. Another sign you might notice is enlarged nipples. You might also see an increase in hormonal behaviours such as rumble strutting and chasing and mounting their cage mates. Both functional and non-functional types of ovarian cysts can be painful. Just just like they can in humans. And guinea pigs as prey animals are so good at hiding signs of pain, so we've got to spot even subtle changes. These might include eating less, looking more hunched, closing their eyes slightly while still standing, and generally being more quiet and subdued in the cage. The sign of pain they can't hide is weight loss, and even a big drop in weight is not always obvious, so that's why you should be weighing your guinea pigs every week. Smaller poops can also indicate weight loss. Some types of cysts, usually non-hormonal ones, can grow very large very quickly. With these, you might notice an enlarged abdomen and even suspect they might have something like bloat. Large cysts can cause pain and gut stasis by pushing on other organs and causing blockages in the digestive tract. Not eating anything at all, by the way, should be treated as an emergency. And I'll put some videos on what to do if your guinea pig isn't eating anything down below in the description. And with our little Phoebe here, she showed all the signs of having hormonal cysts plus a drop in weight, which I might not have noticed had I not been weighing her so often. She lost about 100 grams. And I also noticed her showing some signs of pain as well. So obviously this got us very worried and we booked her in to see the exotics vet. Now I cannot tell you how important it is. Please, please, please see an exotics vet or a vet that's very experienced treating guinea pigs. Normal run-of-the-mill vets simply don't have the training or expertise when it comes to guinea pigs, especially with more specialist things such as ovarian cysts. Basically, having a good vet will make the world of difference, not just for your guinea pig's welfare, but for your own peace of mind as well. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Yes. A good vet should be able to confidently tell you whether your guinea pig has ovarian cysts just by feeling them. In some cases, they might suggest a scan to be 100% sure. Again, if your vet says they can't feel the ovaries, not even to tell you whether they are small or normal sized, then it might be that they're not experienced enough to be doing this kind of examination and you should consider seeing a different vet. A good vet will also run through the various treatment options with you and suggest what they think is most appropriate for your guinea pig, considering their current status, overall health and age. 
So what are the treatment options for ovarian cysts? Option number one is the only surefire treatment and prevention of cysts, and that's spaying your guinea pig, which is removing their ovaries. These days, exotics vets prefer to do what's called a bilateral flank ovarectomy. It might sound complicated, but this is basically removing the ovaries and sometimes the uterus as well through two small incisions up high on the sides of your guinea pig. This is actually where the ovaries are closest to the surface of the skin and it means the surgery is much less invasive and carries less post-operative complications such as infections and abscesses than the traditional midline spay where the incision is larger and underneath the guinea pig. Now of course if your guinea pig is much older or has other health problems they're contending with they might not be a good candidate for surgery. And yes there is always a risk with the anaesthetic no matter what the age or health of the guinea pig. But with the right mixture of drugs and with a highly experienced vet carrying out the operation this risk is very low. Option two is draining the cysts. What's important to know about this option is that it is a temporary fix only suitable for very large fluid filled cysts. The problem with these types of cysts is that they refill with fluid very quickly sometimes in a matter of days. So draining is usually only done to help in an emergency situation and there should be a plan to follow up with another treatment option afterwards when the guinea pig is stable and feeling better again. Option number three is hormonal injections. This is a medium to long-term fix for hormone producing cysts. The injections work by inhibiting the hormones and can sometimes, but not always, alleviate the symptoms. I say medium to long-term because eventually the effects wear off and the body also gets resistant. So continued injections are not as effective as the ones that went before them. That doesn't mean it's not a valid form of treatment though. And in some cases, especially for older piggies who are not good candidates for surgery, this can really help buy them extra pain-free time. And our fourth option is another hormone inhibiting one and that's a hormonal implant. This works in a slightly different way to the injections and has so far been shown to have very limited success but this might change in the future. The implants are also very expensive compared to the other treatment options. So what about Phoebe? I hear you cry. Well, Phoebe is just over three years old. She was overall in good health despite having lost that little bit of weight. So our vet actually recommended the bilateral ovarectomy surgery for her. And we were very lucky to have such a good vet who was very experienced at this type of surgery, has very good outcomes outcomes, so much so that she even spays all of her own female guinea pigs and she advocates for the preventative spaying of young females when they're around four to six months old. And this is something that's never really been a thing for guinea pigs before. Yes, we spay other animals such as cats, dogs and rabbits to prevent ovarian cysts and other reproductive troubles. However, it's always been thought that the operation is too risky for our piggies. But with these new methods, and improvements coming through, it might be something that changes in the future. So just over two weeks ago, Phoebe went in for the op and Nacho went along as well to keep her company. There she is, there's a little face coming and looking. Do you like some? I think we would. <laughs> Bye then. And here's Phoebe after her surgery when we brought her home the same day. I dropped her off at 8.30am and picked her up, fully recovered from the anaesthetic, at 3.30pm. She seems fine, she seems great, so I'm not going to keep her separate. Um, obviously she's had Nacho with her this entire time. And I'm just going to pop her straight back in with the herd. So the vet said I could go ahead and take off this little bandage. back then you'll be able to walk easier without that. As you can see that's what the incisions look like. They are about two centimeters long I'd say. Yeah such a good girl. Hi. <laughs> 
This was Phoebe three days after surgery doing really great. At the time, I did notice she had a small bit of stitch poking out from one of her incisions, which you can see here. However, the vet said this was nothing to worry about. So we were lucky in the fact that we could spay Phoebe and completely get rid of those problematic ovarian cysts. But I do know others have had success with the hormone injections for piggies who aren't good candidates for surgery. And this was Phoebe one whole week after surgery. You can really start to see the hair growing back now and those scars fading away to little scabs. I was trying to keep everything as normal as possible for her, including floor time with the others. And I would not recommend separating piggies from the rest of their herd after a relatively minor operation like this one. And finally, here she is today, just three weeks after surgery, and those incisions are barely visible, and her fuzz is starting to grow back really nicely too. She's doing really well right now, but it hasn't been all plain sailing for her, as my patrons well know. She's been battling a few other health issues which arose at the same time as the cysts, and is now being treated for those. And if you want to know more, you can get the full story over on our Patreon, where I share in-depth discussion on all guinea pig health problems we encounter and talk through all of the expert veterinary advice we receive. A special thank you as well from me and Phoebe here for my patrons and all your support through this time. And to everyone watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you learn more about ovarian cysts in piggies. Please do give it a like and share your own experiences in the comments below too. That engagement will really help get it out to more people. And as ever, thank you so much for watching the channel. We'll see you very soon with another video. Bye bye!